One of the things that we know about this world that we live in is everything has a center. Everything moves or is weighted or is balanced by some type of center. Or even our Earth itself revolves around an axis. Our galaxy moves with a center in mind. Um, something as simple as our center of balance. Uh, if you've ever lost your balance, it's because your, your center was, was off. Sometimes uh, uh, as children, we've gone out and we've played in the yard and we'd spin and then see where we would end up. Uh, my kids would ask me, or my, my girls asked me to pick them up and spin them around, and, and then I set them down, and uh, they want to see where they're going to end up because they can't, they can't stand up straight. And I can't see where they go either because I've been spinning too, so I uh, don't see them quite, quite so well. But the centers of things are, are critical. The, the center of a story or this, this, the theme of a story is important. I don't know how many times we've ever uh, either read a story or read a book or gone and, and, and seen a movie. And after it's over, you thought to yourself or, or you looked at one another and said, what was the point? Because it, it, it may not have had a theme or, or, a, or a center. And we look, we, we naturally look and, and go to things that, that are centered. My dad, a um, few years ago, was driving by um, a, a place that one of those trucks is set up on the side of the road and they sell tools, and, and which is uncommon for him because he's the kind that uh, only buys Craftsman or, or DeWalt. And he saw this and he, for some reason he pulled in there and he saw a grinder and he bought it, and he brought it to me. And so I took the grinder and I set it up on my workbench, and I turned it on, and my grinder started walking across my workbench. And I thought, well, we can take care of that. I'll clamp it down. So I took the grinder, set it on my workbench, and clamped it with C-clamps, and turned it on. And as it, it didn't walk across my bench, but my bench, began to shake. It was impossible to use. And we, I thought, the first of all, the grinder's bad. It wasn't the grinder. It was the wheel that was off center. We got new wheels, good wheels, put them on, and it was usable. The center of the gospel is critical. If a person's salvation hinges on life going smoothly, they will be disappointed. If a person's salvation depends on whether their personal issues are dealt with, they will not experience resolution. If a person's salvation requires the laws of men, they will always be lacking. The rich young ruler said, All these I have kept since my youth. What do I lack? He was off center because he didn't have the most important thing. The center of the gospel is this, that God sent Jesus Christ into the world to deal with sin. A church that makes fun and entertainment the center of their focus is a church that's teaching another gospel. A church that makes rules and regulations the center of their gospel is teaching another gospel. A church that makes miracles and signs the most important is teaching another gospel. A church that makes membership the focal point of their gospel is teaching another gospel. A church that makes baptism the center of most important thing is teaching another gospel. 1 Corinthians 15.1 tells us this. 
15, 1, 2, and 3. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you. Verse 2, by which ye also are saved. Verse 3, how that Christ died for our sins, according to Scripture. It was clearly stated in one of our bulletins on Sunday morning a couple of weeks ago. It says, the uniqueness of the gospel is seen, not in word outlining the manner in which we are to live, but the announcement of divine provision, which is salvation. It's not the manner in which we live. It's not the do's and the don'ts. The center is Christ died to, to take away the sins of the world. A couple of weeks ago, in, the, in our study of, of Mark, Brother Given made uh, the statement that Christ's presence in this world was primarily to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Here's what the putting away of sin has accomplished. It's purged our conscience. It's defeated the final enemy, which is death. It's sanctified us through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ. It is just, we are justified by his blood and we shall be saved from wrath through him. To declare the righteousness for the remission of sins. You know, when something is in remission, that means it's not gaining ground. It's not having its own way. When something, and, and Jesus came to take care, to remit the sins of the world. The blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. We are reconciled to God by the death of his son. The gospel all hinges on the sinner that Jesus came to take away the sin of the world. And that's what we want to remember this evening as we come. Would the young men that's been designated to, to serve the uh, communion come forward? At this table, it's a representative of what brings you to God. We were reconciled to God by the death of his son. Let's remember this as we take communion.